Good morning. So nice to be with you this morning. A new day. And let us spend this first few minutes of this new day in the presence of the Lord meditating on God's word. I pray that today's meditation shall bless you and give you a new revelation of your responsibilities as a child of God, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you are a just a believer and a member of a church or a preacher or whatever you are doing. By the sacrificial death and the resurrection of Jesus, much more blessings have been imparted on us than we realize. The New Testament believers, one of these blessings is that through Jesus Christ, every believer, every born again Christian has been made a priest before God. It was not so in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it was a different thing altogether. Only a qualified minority could become priest. And in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 and chapter 20 verse 6 and also chapter 5 verse 10. Let, let me read these passages for you to refresh your memory and to help you to understand what I have to share. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. It says here, And has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Again, chapter 5, verse 10. You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God. And they will reign on the earth. And then again, chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Passages, these passages show that the believer in Christ Jesus are a kingdom of priests. Uh, but then what does this imply? If you study the duties and responsibilities of the Old Testament priest, the New Testament believers are to perform the same duties and responsibilities. It means the following. Please listen very carefully. Number one, all believers have a direct access to God and His throne through Christ. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, I am the truth and the life and the way. No one can come to the Father but by me. No other mediator between man and God, except the man Christ Jesus. And what is our greatest honor and blessings? We don't need to seek any saints or anyone else to stand as mediator and plead on our behalf. We have been given the privilege of directly approaching the throne of God any time, any place, for any reason. Isn't that great, my dear friends? Even to, to go and see the Prime Minister or President of our nation, we have to go through so many mediators to get an appointment. 
But the greatest privilege of a child of God in the New Testament is that the way to the most holy place is wide open. The moment Jesus breathed his last saying, into your hands, O Father, I commit my life. That very moment, the curtain in that dividing and separating the most holy place from any other place in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Symbolically, it means that the way to the presence of God is now wide open for anyone who choose to come to the Father. Hallelujah! What a privilege and what a joy. There is no place, there is no particular form or way of sitting or using any language. You can approach the throne of God while you are driving, while you are working in the kitchen or while you are doing your work in office or school or in the church or wherever. You can always, while you're walking, you can be in touch with your heavenly Father, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, what a privilege. So we have direct access to the throne of God. Number two, all believers are under obligation to live holy lives. First Peter chapter 1 verses 14, 15 and 16 and I like to read this for you. As obedient children do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And one of the requirements of the Old Testament priest was that he must maintain his holy life both in character and in dealings and in every way. It was important. And he was not allowed to approach the holy place or any place in the temple without offering a sacrifice first for himself making sure that uh, sacrifice is made and accepted for any sin you may have committed. God is holy. What is true of God must be true of his priest, his children as well. Holiness carries the thought of being separated from the rest from the ungodly ways of the world and set apart for love, service and for worship of God. Remember these three things for love, service and for worship of God. Loving God, serve God and worship God. This is the relationship. And in one sentence, it means being like God and being dedicated to Him while living to please Him. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore I exhort you, brethren, present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable to God. Do not be conformed to this world, but to be renewed by the, or transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know that which is pleasing, perfect will of God. Praise be to God. All of us are very familiar with this passage, but how many of us are careful in doing it? Are you ready to live or die for Jesus? It doesn't make any difference. And number three, all believers must offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. 
which includes a living in obedience to god and a non conformity to the world praying to god and praising god i am mentioning these a few things for a believer who has been given the position of priest in the kingdom of god these are the responsibilities and duties you must perform number 4 all believers must intercede and pray for one another and for all people colossians chapter 4 verse 12 Epaphras who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus sends greetings he is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God mature and fully assured that is the ministry of a priest and then in 1st Timothy chapter 2 I urge then first of all that request prayers intercession be made uh, and thanksgiving be made for everyone for everyone that is the duty of a priest he stands before god a priest is to stand before god on behalf of the people offering sacrifices on their behalf and interceding on their behalf thus praying for one another this is your privilege as a priest and uh, fifthly all believers must declare the word and pray for its success acts chapter 4 verse 31 After they prayed the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and spoke the word of god boldly declaring the word of god to the people because people must hear not your ideas or not your opinions not your philosophy or the philosophy of this world people come to your church and wherever you have a, 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 a meeting they come there to hear god's word they want to hear the voice of god so let them hear his voice through the word and that is why apostle paul like sorted his son timothy preach the word be ready in season and out of season and my friends In the New Testament you will see it again and again the apostles wherever they went the only thing they did was declare Jesus Christ the living word Christ and him crucified and let us not try to to to, to impress people by our uh, our our words and eloquence of our words and uh, uh the way we present in attractive way and all these are not to which we must give our focus we must make sure that you are declaring to the people god's word uncompromising undiluted word you must give it to the people as a faithful priest fulfilling god's duty for the blessings of people and glorifying god so that when you stand before him on the rec- day of reckoning you will have the joy of hearing well done my good and faithful servant you have been faithful in the little and now i will make you in charge of much what do you want to hear god say let your desire be what i have just mentioned 
this is what god wants he wants to know how faithful you have been to his word how faithful you have been to his calling how faithful you have been to jesus christ how faithful you have been to your ministry of nurturing people in the church and uh, leading them to the truth nothing but the truth may the lord bless you as you fulfill your priestly responsibilities remember you are responsible in doing all these priestly duties in a much more effective way because you have the holy spirit's anointing upon you the lord bless you and use you father we praise you and thank you lord for this great honor you have bestowed upon us that you have made us a kingdom of priest and we understand now our responsibility may we take it seriously and do our best to glorify you and exalt your name may not our people be deceived let them be encouraged knowing the truth seeing the light and walking in the light of your word thank you in jesus name amen god bless you this is a wonderful day enjoy this day amen